Oh yeah, yeah. Oracle's he's uh, he is really good. I mean, he brings a purge. He brings the heal support. Obviously, false promises, stupid, and I mean that in a good way for the hero at least. So yeah, he's uh, understandably I, I can see that being a ban worthy. Um, but yeah, the Monkey King coming out for a Thunder Predator after the Omni Knight happens. Interesting. Uh, a little curious to me in that Guardian Angel is, of course, very good against a hero like Monkey King, so relying on not fighting into that at times. But Yeah, but Monkey King, once again, as far as landing stage goes, another very strong lane. Uh, just going to be able to dominate, hopefully, whatever lane he's in, uh, whether it's uh, safe lane or mid. Venom Ooh, wow, we got some unique stuff happening on the side yeah, of like Ghost it. Pride. You like it. Do you? Well, why do you like the Venom answer? Well, for one, with the, if they do get inside the Monkey King all and Venom is a part of it, they're not going to really want to be around that circle all that much because all that uh, damage that goes into the Venom all is going to deteriorate them over time. Hmm. So it gives them a reason to, to fight remaining. around that Monkey King all to deal damage rather than just uh, spread out. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and the Omni Knight, of course, another hero too that provides mm -hmm. usually more sustain in fights. So you're like Venomancer, Omni Knight, Morphling could definitely sustain as well with the shifting as we talked earlier. Radiant Doom's got team, great regen. Yeah. yeah, this this seems like it's going to be a very difficult team to just deal with and kill, especially. Yeah. Dang, 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 mother... <laughs> it's just so, I, just, I love that line. Yeah, just staying quiet <laughs> during times like that is so appropriate. <laughs> Who is that? I can't. I can't put my finger on it. Who's, who's voice line? I'm there? not sure, to be honest with you. Ding, ding, Ten ding, mother effort. Remaining. Who said It's a good that? one, though. It is Five a good one. I'm sitting here like trying to think. I don't I recognize the that. voice. Was that? It almost sounds like BSJ, honestly. You think that's BSJ? Probably not. I could see him or Kyle saying it, but I don't think it's either one of them. Yeah, no, that didn't sound like Kyle. I wouldn't recognize mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, chat will tell us in, once the delay catches up here. Call of City gets and everything. Uh, Earth Spirit, the final pick, or final ban even, by Thunder Predator. Uh, hero that, uh, well, we've seen used uniquely even earlier today, but not going to be given the option. Now, Gorilla's Pride. Yeah, that's another thing with their lineup, too. I mean, Omni Knight's definitely could be an off lane, could be a support. Venomancer, very similar idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so, really don't know what to expect there yet. Yeah, I'm curious on if Monkey King's going to go mid or think right now. Because they could even transition this Fen into a four have the bat rider three. Oh yeah absolutely so and that it's a very versatile draft by both teams which is kind of cool to see see what they have in uh store for us radiant team pick dire team pick lena no. all right get lena ta band uh TA. Right. ta is there yeah, no, Jamari TA, definitely a possibility. Um, you are dealing with a Venomancer, though. That sounds kind of gross. Also, even Doom. So, yeah, not not seconds. a great... In the laning phase, wouldn't be bad, but... Yeah. Throughout the game, Five seconds. not too fun. They have plenty of reserve time, so we'll see. You know who they need to pick here? They, they need to pick Earthshaker, and whoever plays it has to have <laughs> Instantly bought the new Arcana. Yeah, that, that's what needs to happen here. So let's see if they come through. <laughs> you didn't have the Agnum Scepter on him when you were showing on the stream. He does like a little front flip. Kind of cool. Ooh. Oh, you're mentioning that. Yeah, I'm going to look for that. Invoker. Okay. That's always a treat. It is. It's uh, This is this is quite a treat, this game in general. I mean, uh, some unique stuff happening. Um. So it is going to be Jamari. Uh, Toon's playing Sven, so he's back to that old carry roll. Yep. yep. However, so wait, this means it's going to be an offlane Monkey King? No, it's an offlane Batrider. It's a support Monkey King. <gasps> Are they doing a support invoker? Yeah, Stop they, it. Would they really no. do it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there, there's Insania's done it before for Alliance. I'm not saying it. I did not get to see that. I might have to go back and watch. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's probably not worth it. It was pretty bad, <laughs> actually, but it's. I, I'm an Invoker player myself, so the the theory crafting of it is is fun. And ever since you know the Ghost Walk change and his Cold Snap change and being the Urn build, like the possibilities there. I'm not gonna, but no, see, it is gonna be a, a mid Invoker, the usual. 
I um, can say I've played two games of Invoker, and the first game I didn't know what the hero did. It was when I first started. Never want to try it again. It's no interest in that hero. He's, 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 he really is a different game. You have to. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to practice him. Mm -hmm. So I see. I don't know now because mm -hmm. Schofield's on Monkey. So. Are they actually going to run a safe lane Monkey King, and is this a support Sven? I, it, I think it's a support Sven. So a tune is just a support now, I, I guess. Yeah, he's bouncing around. He's just bouncing around. He's able to do either one. He played Earth Spirit and then Enigma, and now he's going to play Sven as a support, we believe. So, yeah, that is uh, that is interesting to me. But either way, I'm making uh, some adjustments here to move forward and trying to qualify for a minor after all. Um, so, yeah, going back to the picks on Gorilla Pride side, so Omni Knight going to be in the hands of Excel, and mm -hmm. he is uh, their, their main support, so will be a support Omni. Um, I believe that was Sword on Venomancer, so it's an offlane Veno. And then they got NA Pride with uh, Ush in the middle. What is he playing again? I'm loading in here. Lena. 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 That's right. Mm hmm. Iceberg's a fun. Well, Iceberg's not even on that team anymore. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I miss. I miss him uh, when he was on. Got you. Yeah. Just... Okay. Yeah. Episode last year, I got the chance to to cast that, of course, and uh, Iceberg got to meet him, and obviously, Windstrike as a team, but that that different squad. Yeah, Iceberg is. He's yeah. a character. He was a. He's definitely a fun guy. Mm -hmm. uh, e Home and Team Sirius are the other teams, by the way, out of China that are representing that region and going to the minor. So, we still have Europe. Uh, Southeast Asia and, of course, South America to find out over these next couple of days. And we are out of the pause. So, game one commencing. I need to change my settings real quick. That uh, update changed all my settings. It's worth it, man. Or Shaker Arcana. <laughs> Uh, Jamari does get Exhort, so we have an early answer here as far as what kind of Invoker we're going to see. Seconds to battle. It is going to be Sunstrike Primed, ready to go. Uh, they definitely have... Eh, they have okay setup for Sunstrike. Stormhammer is the big one from a tune. suppose a good Ink Swell could set it up too with some nice coordination, at least in the earlier part of the game, so look forward to... Seeing if Jamari is able to land said sun strikes. Like I said, one second. Still playing around with my settings, so gotta see what all changed. All good. Grimstoke is pretty deep over here. Right now, Gorilla's Pride doesn't have anyone at the bottom lane. They are doing some rotations. So again, we after game one of the previous series, really just expect everything. It's just. That was the weirdest thing to see. They, they just gave up a Tier 1 tower early on, and we saw tons of lane swapping happening mm. just all over the place. <laughs> it was odd. Um, but Sword eventually makes his way bottom. However, he runs right into Sven and Grimstroke. Literally no one at the creep wave right now from either team at the bottom lane. But Doom is going to TP in, and he'll start making up some CS. Figures uh, might as well get some farm in there. Nobody else is there, so... It will be Doom in the safe lane. Actually, well, Doom is supporting, though, right? Yeah, Doom being played by Moose, so technically the support of the squad. So it's a uh, sword on Venomancer that got cut off initially. He's going to make his way in, though. And he'll be the one prioritizing farm now. As he had boots first on Doom, so evident there that he's playing more of the supporting role. He finds a center off the bat. That's a good one to find. Excel, meanwhile, top lane. First blood is very likely coming through. Sven finally gets the auto attack off to make the kill happen. So Omni Knight, he had Heavenly Grace. It must have just come off cooldown or something because they didn't cast it there. and It was off cooldown when he died. But either way, good first blood for Thunder Predator. I take what I please. Figured out yet? No, my game is completely frozen for oh change to change it so i'm sitting here waiting i see invoker mid that's kind of cool <laughs> that's... so give me one sec invoker is not supporting unfortunately as we hoped for he's <laughs> indeed mid um yeah restart though do whatever you need to do just let me know all right um i'm gonna mute my mic real quick you're so low all good I i've done plenty of that in my time Sven's wrapping around mid lane. Ush. I don't think he knows. 
Although, you know what? He does have a ward here, so he should actually know that this is happening. Yeah, he's, he's just he's playing it safe. As soon as uh, Sven appears, I'm sure he'll back up. Um, what is the Valkyrie? He has level 1 Quas, so he could go for the Colts now. Not the most value, though. He's going to try here, but yeah, you see Ush is way too reactive to it. And Sven with the triple mango arcane rune rotation, unfortunately, is going to come up short. And instead, he'll head back hey towards you. the top lane. So mid lane match of 15 and 3 Lena versus a 10 and 4 Invoker. So Lena most certainly having the better of the mid lane matchup so far, um, as that was a kill on Schofield up here. All right. Looks like Omni Knight and Morphling working together, taking advantage of Sven being missing up until the last second. As he comes in, as we have a pause here, but looked like Monkey King was TPing back in. Grimstroke also off to the side was uh, perhaps counter warding. There's the spawn, does have a pole camp ready to go now. And he's going to head back towards the top lane because with Monkey King back, maybe he could go for a play on the morph lane, but Heavenly Grace put out and now a tune. Having to respect some good damage there. Yeah, Heavenly Grace is. It's just a good all-around ability. It it does do a dispel initially. Uh, it's a strong dispel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, strong dispel on top of the regen, but really most importantly, I think, is that status resistance that it applies. We're looking at 50 status resistance, just all levels. So even at level one, that stun durations on a hero that has Heavenly Grace, not going to be the strongest. And then on top of all of that, there's then the strength, the bonus strength that you get. Seven right now, and it goes up to 28 strength. Obviously, a hero like Morphling is great. There we go. The, okay, well. Sometimes you hype up an ability, talk it up and everything, and it doesn't really do much when you look for it. It did dispel, as we saw there, but it's, it just was not enough. Uh, Morphling living life a little too much on the edge and happen to fall right off the ledge there. So, Good play, though, from Thunder Predator. Invisibility. I keep looking back at this mid matchup and noticing Ush is he's dominating. He's, he's doing a fantastic job. Um, if this was a Quas Wex Invoker, I would be a little more expecting of this, but the, the fact that he got win Exor, last hit's uh, potential is ideally a bit stronger. Ush is just, um, it looks like he's harassing him quite effectively, zoning him out, and now Moose is here and going to open up with the Infernal Blade, the Centaur Stomp, the LSA perfectly landed as a result. Here comes a War Cry from Sven, as well as a Storm Hammer, going to keep Jamari alive for now, unless Moose has something to say about it. He's taking him down with a couple more auto attacks on the Scorch Earth, gets credit for the kill. Lena survives as well, Attune going to maybe at least get a turn on Doom, as Scorched Earth has now run off. He does have the Devourer Regen still kicking in, and he's going to be able to wait around for the Seder maybe, as Attune... Trying to make him pay for that. Level 1 Stormhammer ready. Can he get the Seder? No, he's going over. One second. Yes, he's going to be able to pick it off. Out comes the Sunstrike, though, and down it goes, Doom. So, yeah, at least he gets the farm from it, I suppose. I but the Banner Moon's also spawning as we hit five minutes. And so far it is a uh, – only one Banner Moon's been picked up. No, a couple it looks like now. So there will be some trading going on of that. Was the Banner Moon destroyed? The Bounty Room must have been destroyed somewhere. Maybe it was with the Venno Ward. I'm pretty sure it might have been that because, yeah, there's only three picked up. Schofield. He's at Half-Life currently. Doom's running in. Heavily Grace to help keep uh, Morphling alive. Does have that level two purification as well. Here comes an Inkswell in response though with Sven. They just run at moves. The Sunstrike even coming out. Beautiful coordination from the side of Thunder Predator. On top of the Sunstrike to finish the job. So Invoker making up room there. And Morphling also gets picked off by the Stroke of Fate that manages to land. So Omni Knight's presence isn't doing enough right now in this lane. He's uh, between his heel and the Heavenly Grace. Thunder Predator just, they don't care. As us, she should get a kill here. So Laguna Blade not even needed. Double damage when he had bottled up. Makes the auto attacks work. And Midas is queued up for Invoker. Feels like it has been a while since you've seen this kind of Invoker build. Oh, so that was a short-range tornado, level one Wex. But you know what? It's going to work out for Jamari. <laughs> he just mans up against Lena. Lena did not expect the plays to come out from Invoker, underestimating completely. Jamari just confident with, his, uh, with the skill damage there and gets the kill. Very well played, but going back to the Midas choice, feels like we've just seen a lot of the Urn build even 
on these invokers lately. Usually more like Quas Wex, sure. Radiant structures um, are fortified. But uh, Damari going back to the hand of Midas attack. build as soon as possible, and then Gaia's right into the axe, I'm sure, to follow as a Sun Strike morph. Oh, the combination! Man, this is just fun to watch as an Invoker player. Not a good one, but it's fun to watch good Invoker players, especially with good team coordination and Sun Strikes. Monkey King with the Gaia's level two boundless strike on top attack. of the Sun Strike, which it's level three Exhort. Yeah, level four Exhort even now. So CS maybe being won by Lena in the mid lane currently. Invoker, my guess is higher net worth though. Yep, he's slightly higher net worth. In fact, top in the game thanks to these Sunstart kills. He is 2-1-2. Two, and two. He is well on his way to Hannah Midas. This is actually going to be a really good time. He actually is getting it also before the boots even. Went the full wand at least. Doom rotating mid. They, they're realizing Invoker is actually getting some very good farm. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So trying to address him now. Dyer As scan. perfect scan from Thunder Predator. They literally scan right on top of Doom. So Invoker has a great idea that somebody's there. Top lane looks like some more initiation. Stun over on the Morphling. Out comes the Heavenly Grace. So Excel, he might die himself for that. That's a sacrifice that he's willing to make. Goes down and Morphling. Did he hang around too long? Heavenly Grace going to wear off in a second. Uh, full Jingu stacks. Boundless Strike in three seconds. This should be a kill. He dodges a Storm Hammer with the Boundless Strike. Yeah, easy kill. And the Sun Strike not even needed. Double kill for Schofield, in fact, on the Monkey King. And he now takes over top farm. Invoker. They collapse onto him. Uh, trying to make the kill happen, but with a war cry, the Laguna Blade coming out. It's not enough damage, however. Now Jamari turning around on Moose. Oh, three quads, the regen. It's going to be enough to stay alive. Yes, the fairy fire on top of that, and the wand even. Ward's going down for Venomancer, though. Venomancer's going to cut him off. He just throws out a Sun Strike, hoping for the best. Does not land. Can Ush now make it out? Frank trying to not make that happen or let that happen even. He's got a lasso. Can't get. Oh, lasso. Yeah, Lena was hoping that he did not have lasso, I'm guessing. Because uh, <laughs> he knew for sure he had lasso. There's no way that's working. But good job by Batrider catching up. Schofield manning up against Morphly Me while the boundless strike once again. This time it's just simply Monkey King. The mana for Morphly does not work out. Middle Tower does go down in favor of Gorilla's Pride. As they see a TP away from Grimstroke, though, so. Whew, chaotic game so far, as expected in game number one. A thousand net worth lead for Thunder Predator, so nothing too ridiculous there. Um, but I do keep an eye on this Invoker and the fact that he almost has a Anamitis. Very good news for them. And Sven, 10 minute bounty rune, not worth it there. Although Batrider does a good job of taking the bounty rune away from Gorilla's Pride. Invisibility. My waters rise. Can Frank get out of here now? He has got 12 wand charges, does have Firefly. Gonna pop it there. Get over the ledge, Sven's running in. Will help him, no Frank should survive. Has some good poison damage on him, but again, especially with the wand, there's no chance he's dying there. And he makes it out at least. Sven going to Vlad's. Trying to be a good utility support for the team. Invoker, Hannah Midas is coming out. So, pretty much around 11 minute Hannah Midas. Really not too shabby. Double Null Talisman and a Magic 1 in hand 2. And sure enough, he does queue up the Ags. Wants to get at least Brown Boots first. Denied. The Monkey King, though, Diffusal Blade will be his choice. However, Monkey King's in a lot of trouble. Okay. Mischief is not going to save him unexpected. there. Good rotation between Doom and Lena. Clearly did not expect that. Did Monkey King push way too far up? No vision in his jungle. Uh, I'm guessing that was a smoke play. I didn't notice initially. Speaking of smoke, Sven smoking there. I believe he was spotted though by a ward. Yep, should have been spotted by this ward right here in case you guys can't see it. This one, we're looking at. There you go. So Sven unable to make a play there. Venomancer, Spirit Vessel, first item. Okay. Just making high priority to get that Spirit Vessel on. Suppose against here like Monkey King, definitely not bad. And again, in general, Spirit Vessel is nice. As Sword is trying to run away now. He is plenty tanky. Thanks to that Spirit Vessel. Has Heavenly Grace to back him up too if need be. Oh, there's a Soul Bind. Heavenly Grace, he couldn't get it off in time. I don't believe the Sun Strike coming out. The double lasso. And they both just evaporate there. 
Omni Knight was being very patient, not using the Heavenly Grace, and might not have mattered in the end to be fair, but still. As well as Thunder Predator's playing, though, it, under a 1,000 net worth lead right now. Um, the top two belonging on their side, but then the next four all belong on the side of Gorilla's Pride. So the tune, meanwhile, is just <laughs> completely collapsed on. He could not get out of there in the appropriate It's a Disaster call from, of course, Capitalist, the cash that made that uh, iconic call in history. Under attack. Dyer's Kappa. top tower is under attack. I know it's Toby Kai's Oh, chat's going to love that one. But yeah, the Spirit Vessel first on Venomancer, as Monkey Dyer's King is dead. <laughs> Picking up the Spirit Vessel, assisting with the Doom activated on Monkey King. Make sure that kill happens. Illusion. Radiance I suppose with how much action there is attack. happening in this game, the Spirit Vessel is going to get plenty of value with the charges. So maybe that's the biggest reason you liked it. This is an illusion. Is Moose going to realize that before he does anything silly? He doesn't have Doom, so... Doesn't bother running for it. Port coming in from Monkey King. Thunder Predator wants to collapse right here. Maybe on the Omni Knight who went too far All up. Excel. Pretty sure you are dead, good sir. Sunstrike to finish it. No, not enough damage. And they just ran away thinking that was going to kill him. The whole cool guys don't look at explosions. Fortunately, the explosion didn't finish the job initially, but Monkey King was there to take him out. And he almost has that Diffusal Blade now picked up. Double Radiant damage rune, 14 minutes spawn. Attack. Up at the top lane. Healing or top rune spot even. As Wake Frank up, is girl. dead. Got a little too close for comfort, and LSA hit it looks like. So, Gorilla's Pride pressuring this bottom. Tier 1 tower, Monkey King, Wukong's command is ready. He's looking to set up, can they cut down the street somehow? No, the Sun Strike though, on top of Lena with the Soul Mine coming out. Not enough for damage for the kill initially, the Wukong's is down though, and Lena does melt. So does Doom, Swords on the run. He's got the Spear Vessel, 21 charges, so he could have a chance of getting out of here. In fact, the poison damage enough to take out a tune so far. That Poison Nova, pretty tasty. He wants a kill also on Prada now, and Prada might actually die to this, and especially with the Gale. Eh, no, it's not going to be enough. He's got sticks as well. So the pursuit on Venomancer pays off, and they make it a three-for-one trade, favoring Thunder Predator. Jamari, now his boots. He's got a point booster, 1,200 gold saved up. He is, continues to be top farm in the game. Especially for a game where there's a ton of action. Oh my God. It's impressive that Evoker is managing to be top farm. I guess Radiant to that point, though, Sun Strikes are attack. feeding him plenty of kills, of course. Oh, Omni mean, Knight's got four sentries on him. Doing some counter warding. Also, the Ghost Walk, of course, from Invoker. Gonna look out for his Grimstroke. He's in trouble. LSA, nope. Oh, she thought he went south. He did not. And thus, the pursuit has ended. But Yules is going to be picked up on Lena. Uh, Yules does feel pretty good this game. <laughs> Blessings. How's Morphling looking? He's going to Lincoln's. He does have the Omni Knight backup as well, so this is going to prove to be a tough kill on Morphling later on in this game. I mean, they say that he's died five times, to be fair, but yeah, it was it was a rough landing stage. He, it seems like he was overestimating quite a bit, especially with the Omni Knight support, what he could do. And Thunder Predator kept capitalizing, but I think as the game moves on, that will certainly become an issue. Uh, Venomancer. Venomancer's farming well. He's working now towards a Veil. So they're going to go to the Veil of Discord. Great synergy with this team. And even the Rod of Atos he's thinking about later on, so we's see. As Monkey King's got his Diffusal finished, he runs away before Doom can catch up, despite that Venomous Gale.
drums on Doom. Blink Dagger queued up on him. Yeah, BKB for this Monkey King. Yeah, he is going to go in next. I was gonna, you're dealing with the farming Venomancer, and Lena BKB is really necessary this game. Double damage. Um, so Monkey King getting it. Invoker, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if Invoker goes for one, too, even as a follow-up to this. Maybe go bots first, but BKB really does a lot of work in this game, specifically for Thunder Predator. Frankly, for both teams, but... No sorceries avail. Oh, Omni Knight. Caught up too. There's the inhibit. Found the strike no. into a perfect sun strike. We've seen that combo once or twice this game. Let's invoke going over talent. See to go the chaos meter damage. Dyer's middle so gonna get the cold snap. Attack. Swells out of range. Of course, Ag's online though for Invoker and just feels so much better. Illusion. Uh, Veil finished on Venomancer. So he continues to farm very well, and so does Lena. Lena's really caught up. Had a great start with CS, died a couple times. But now back to second in net worth. Getting a glimpse in terms of what he's thinking, and Aether Lens next, and then even an eventual Axe as combo from Jamari. There's a Yules to help with the cold snap. Deafening Blast, but with Omni Knight backing up, there's no more that Jamari can do for that. As elsewhere, though, <laughs> Moose is picked off. My guess the lasso looks like it. With Monkey King there for the damage. It's a good find by Frank as he's got the drums picked up. Pipe is almost finished on Sven, wow. With the Vlads first, going to have a full pipe soon. Speaking of an uh, item that feels pretty necessary this game, that with the BKBs. So Monkey King, 1800 gold saved up, is working on it. Invoker, planning to go with Lincoln's instead. Interesting there. I guess against Doom is the biggest reason as to why. Dyer are scanning. Radiant are scanning. I deserve Body Rune battle. Aggressive Yules on Bat Rider. They want to finish the kill. Frank, though, he's a little too fast, and he will fly away. The Dragon Slave out of range. And with the Soul Bind also placed, the Radiant team cannot pursue further. Thunder Predator is certainly hitting a power spike here, though, with that pipe finish. I think the BKB on Monkey King is the key, though, too. When they have the BKB on Monkey King, things have been pretty juicy. I suppose a blink on Batman here also. He lassos as he gets taken out there. Trying to pull in Doom for the kill. The team's running around the Inkswell. It's only going to hit one. There's more Flame taken over. Sven using it for himself with the Storm Hammer, as well as a War Cry. Out comes a Guardian Angel. The Sunstrike going to completely whip. Wukongs is down, but Schofield, he's trying to live. The Doom activated on him after the Wukongs. He's just standing his ground the best that he can. Zona auto attacks. He kills Venom. Man. No, that was just a ward, I believe. So he goes down. Sven goes down as well. A triple kill for Ush. And now the tier two mid tower in trouble. Gorilla's Pride feeling the momentum after that fight. So that, that power spike that I was talking about, again, the BKB on Monkey King was the key. He does not have it yet. And even with the pipe of Sven, simply not enough survivability. Getting that Doom on Monkey King. Granted, he popped the Wukongs already, but still certainly helped in the fight. And yeah, Guardian Angel is, of course, a very difficult ability to fight into. And that kind of goes back to the Monkey King pick, as I stressed. You picked it into a GA. So whenever you Wukongs, as long as he has a GA response, then that Wukongs doesn't feel like it's going to do too much. Yeah. 
We are going to see the old school shotgun build on Morphling. The ethereal blade queued up. Invoker did remain alive throughout that fight, though, and he continues to flash farm, and he, too, in fact, is going to be KB. And yeah, we, we saw the Lincoln scoot up earlier again, and the idea of against Doom, I get, but just BKB value this game is too strong to pass up. So him and Monkey King ideally will have it at a similar time. Try to be able to make plays happen with it. You just see Venomancer, though. Venomancer continues to be quite the harasser. All three Radiant cores are nearly identical with their net worth. And that's a good thing in the sense they're second, third, and fourth. Just behind that Invoker. So Gorilla's Pride really does have to feel pretty good about their chances. I know that laning phase didn't go the greatest with the Omni Knight Morphling, but again, on paper, it suggests that throughout the game, stated earlier, this is going to be a difficult game to kill the Morphling, let alone anyone when the GA's up, especially. They do have Tornado Purge from Invoker. There's a Black King Bar finished for Invoker now. Ags is almost finished for Lena. So they're going to get these BKBs, and Ags is just going to have a. Or <laughs> Lena's going to have an Ags, anyways. Radiant are scanning. <laughs> Almost just said Ags is going to have Alina. I guess you could look at it that way. Point is, will be that pure damage being able to pierce. Dyer are scanning. Dyer scans out. Let's see, uh, no Venos here, at least. Soulbind. Going to lasso him into Doom. That is beautiful. Okay, we talk about double lasso, but I don't know if I've ever seen it used that way. That was a clever play there. <laughs> bringing the Venomancer Soulbound target into the Doom. Now, I mean, at that point, they were both pretty much dead anyway, so it was more for the pretty factor. But damn it, it was pretty. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Monkey King's hopping around, seeing if he can find anyone in the back lines. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. As they take out bottom tier one tower. But speaking of the agonims, Lena does have it. Cataclysm almost online for Invoker. He's level no 19. As I'm not gonna be run down, or is he? Heavenly Grace pop. Sunstrike completely whips the course and Laguna Blade turn on a monkey king. He is dead. Sven gets here really late. A tune just charges into a death trap. Yeah, that was an ambitious play on his part. He goes down. Meanwhile, up here, that's Doom activated on Invoker. Invoker's dead. Out for 70 seconds. What happened? Gorilla's Pride just finds three kills, one after the other. Thunder Predator on different pages, picking different fights. And Gorilla's Pride capitalizes with it. That's a streak stopper as well. Invoker, 430 gold going the way of Morphling. And an easy transition into Roshan. Also means the uh, shotgun's just about finished on Morphling 2 with the Ethereal Blade. I wonder if they give this to Ush. It's probably going to be Morphling. But I could see the logic to give it to Ush. Being that Omni Knight's backing up the Morphling, maybe more priority on him. But they are going to give it to Morphling in the end. That's Moose. Did we miss a stomp initially? Dude pops God Strength and it is run. Out comes the Heavenly Grace immediately. Soulbind, the double silence. With the Phantom's Embrace, Wukong's on top of that, and Omni Knight gets picked off before he can pop GA, so that was a good silence. Reventing the Guardian Angel in the fight. Venomancer hoping for the TP. It's not going to happen with the Storm Hammer, though, and now it's Deep Pride's turn to go a little too deep. Moose, he gets stopped with the Cold Snaps, trying to TP away, and four are dead, favoring Thunder Predator, so of course Morphling still has the Aegis. And but man, what a swing. <laughs> this is going to be a game of swings, it seems like. 
Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower has chance. fallen. Really does reflect that. Still slightly favoring G Pride, but you can see throughout the game the change Radiant in momentum. Structures are fortified. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. The armor of omniscience. Trying to get tier two. Omni Knight. Gonna do what he can to harass. Out comes the tornado. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Radiance bottom Omni Knight, tower or Morphling, excuse attack. me, trying to get close enough to maybe even morph in the Sven, but unable to catch him. That does seem like a really good morph target for Morphling. Speaking of that, though, I could see him getting target allies Radiance at level 20. And I say attack. that for the Omni Knight. Because having the option to just put Heavenly Grace on yourself and even throw a heal out if need be. And then letting letting Omni Knight be more of a protector for the Lena in these fights, or even Venomancer. I think Radiant's there is validity to that. Is under attack. Dane, 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 mother ah, Toby Wan with the great ding 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 line. Should I say PSJ? Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Play Gordon Radiant and stall the creep wave as they push top lane. Ethereal Blade finished on more flame. Monkey King. Haven't seen the BKB yet. Being used that that is. Dyer's structures are fortified. Fear not he wants heresy. to set up a Wukong so badly. Dyer's top tower. Scope is not gonna go. The he has teammates pushing in the end of the lane, so that's where it's pretty good for Thunder Predator. They had bottom and attack. mid being pushed in. Invoker making his way away, that is. As he realizes the Radiant team is retreating, that Aegis still has a minute and a half of remaining on it. So certainly Gorilla's Pride could look to play aggressive with the Morphling still. Lotus Orb for Sven is almost finished. Keeping that support theme. It's still so odd to me seeing a tune playing these supports. For how long he's been playing carry. Almighty money. I Lincoln's invoker wants to go back to that, and again, it still is good against Doom. Made the priority for the BKB though. Monkey King has really fallen off, however. The fact that he's fourth in net worth is almost surprising to me, because he's still sitting with just a diffuser blade and blacking bar. Engagement down here. Cole snaps up. You see he's trying to Doom the Invoker. He will get it off. Poppy can be right before, but now Invoker's in a bad spot. So Doom is going to set up a turn kill from the looks of it. Oh, he, oh, he morphs into Invoker. Okay, he has Cold Snap and Meteor. <laughs> Not a hero you see Morphling morphing into often. But honestly, that's a pretty good combo to have. He's going to Cold Snap. And there's a Meteor. Is he really going to hit? No. Okay. <laughs> Not much of an Invoker player, I see. Grimstroke, though, with the Ethereal Blade. Too much damage to the face. Still goes down. So that's what matters. Did he get that? No, Radiance he did get the waveform attacks targets. Attack. Okay. So I'm not going for it, as I theory crafted about earlier. Sven is pushing bottom during this with God Strength, but with Invoker and Grimstroke dead and make it Monkey King dead, apparently, too. He's just hanging around in the trees, and they simply spotted him. So they're going to force out buybacks on Monkey King as well as the Grimstroke. Soul binds up. Lena Venomancer hit. Wukong's trying to be thrown down, but look at Morphling. He takes over the Monkey King. He stops the first guy. Nitro goes down. As soon as the Wukong's goes down, though, Schofield, he's going to end up dying throughout this most likely. He pops a bound the strike, running around with like a chicken with his head cut off as he has the BKB activated. But he's going to die. Yeah, that did not seem like that was ever going to work. And again, the GA just complete counter to it. 
Schofield in full panic mode there. Ethereal Blade to nuke down Grimstroke. Meanwhile, during all of this, Sven is dealing with Doom. Sven does have a TP still, but of course he can't just use it in front of him. So Doom is occupying Sven this whole time. So it's really just Batrider versus them all. Although Invoker has now resurrected. Top tower goes down, Lasso. Oh, there's a Heavenly Grace. So Heavenly Grace proven to be a pretty good tool, as I mentioned earlier, just saying. Uh, oh, Moose finally goes down. He buys back, though, even. Sven making his way all the way back, but Doom's like, I did my job. It's time to, you know, complete everything. Now Sven's trying to cut the creep wave. Gonna go for Lena. Does have God Strength. There's a war cry, though, from Morphling. As he morphs into Sven, so he's got a plethora of heroes to choose from. Shotgun Blast, Laguna Blade as well. You are not surviving that. And now Invoker's caught. He gets his BKB up, but the BKB reaction from Ush as the Storm Hammer was flying in. Counter Storm Hammer from Morphling goes through with the waveform. A tune. He's going to end up falling here. 54 seconds. He's out. No buyback. There's Cataclysm. It's not going to hit, though. As Morphling focusing on the Tier 4 tower instead. Oh, goes in and nukes down Batrider. And I think Rilda's Pride is on the verge here. I'm taking game one. And Evoker is out. Monkey King's up as well. There's Doom on Evoker, though. So now Invoker's useless. And they're just focusing the Ancient. Man, G Pride really turned it on in this game. And despite Invoker getting fantastic early farm, as <laughs> the awkward DC right as the Shrine's about to die of the Ancient. And there we go. Um. It didn't matter. I mean, there were some great combos with Monkey King and Invoker early on. But all three cores I go back to for G-Pry continue to farm very well. And I do think we felt the Omni Knight presence, not only against Batrider, but against the Monkey King with the GA. Things just worked great. So G-Pry deserved victory as they take game number one, attempting to move on to the grand final. So it is a best of the three, though. You can see what they can do to move on. Uh, as you guys probably noticed as well, my co-caster unfortunately never came back. So, <laughs> so I'll try to figure out what the issue is there, see what we can make happen. Uh, but worst case, doing solo, not a big deal. I got Chad as my co-caster. It's always fun. But we are going to go to a break as game number one in the books. Game number two, hopefully, going to be a short break, and we will get right into it. G Pride up one nothing over Thunder Predator here for the South American qualifiers of the Star Ladder Miner. Shout out to DX Racer as well once again for supporting and sponsoring this event. Make those awesome gaming chairs. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. 